Did you take your tea, dear? Emma, you never make my tea sweet enough. You know those herbals are so bitter. My oh. mouth's all puckered. Oh, you're just like a little kid. You're still looking for that bit of sugar in the bottom of the cup. Pitiful. Oh, Olive, this is beautiful. Just beautiful. They must have just bloomed. Let me see. You remember, Emma. Remember what, dear? The promise. If I was to get real bad sick, what you do? Yes, I'll take care of you. Right here, just like I promised. When I die, I want to die in my own bed. I don't want to die in no strange place. And I don't want to poison me like they do everything else. Yes, I know, Olive, I know. Are you Mrs. Greeley? I certainly am. I'm the one that called. Is that them? That's them, all right. Well, we appreciate your concern, ma'am. We'll take care of the situation. Well, anybody who's sick and won't go to the hospital has got to be crazy, right? Yes. This job, you see everything. Who, who is it? Is, is that Mr. Stone, Emma? No, that's not Mr. Stone's footsteps. Good day, ladies. My name is uh, Atman. I'm from the county welfare. This is my assistant, Willa Peters. Well, state your business. What do you want? Mrs. Barry, are you sick? Oh, Olive's just a little bit under the weather. I've been giving her a treatment. Mm. Young woman, you and your friend just get along. Leave us be. Mrs. Barry, I think you need to be seen by a doctor. Ain't no doctor gonna tell me what's wrong with me. I know what's going on in my insides. It's breathing that miasma from the city when the wind's to the east. Used to, a body could get a breath of fresh air during the middle of the day. Oh, just the same, Mrs. Barry. I think you need a doctor to tell you what's the matter with you. And as far as that... Young uh, woman, you do something about this. I ain't going to no doctor. I ain't sick, I tell you. And if I was, I'd rather die right in this bed. No, ma'am, you, you calm yourself. Mrs. Paxton, you better pack a few things for yourself and your friend. You're both going to have to go to the hospital. Oh, Emma. I hurt so bad. It's all this excitement. I'm going to call for an ambulance. Why the two of them? Well, that one needs to see a doctor. And they both need to see a psychiatrist. After all, it's our department's money that's paying for them to stumble around this place. I didn't see anybody stumbling. Nothing broken. 
She just has simple arthritis. And uh, lab tests are normal for her age. Aside from the fact that she's blind and 75 years old. And really nothing wrong with her. Well, I could have told you that. She's a regular tiger that Mrs. Perry. There's no like of life in her. <laughs> and she's probably getting as good care there as she could get here. The uh, use of hot and cold applications is a very excellent treatment in some situations. Uh, do they have any relatives? No. No, I don't think so. I, uh, I was about the only contact they had on the outside. You know, when I first took over the route 10 years ago, the neighbors told me they were blind men. So I, well, I started taking the mail up to the house and bringing groceries and something like that, you know. And actually, the only mail they ever got was a welfare check once a month. No, no, I don't think they had any people. How shall I go now? Or when can they go home? Well, it's uh, not quite that simple. Uh, they're going to have to have some psychiatric evaluation so the county can determine what to do with them. Do with them? You mean you, the county can take them and put them away somewhere? Look, Doc, that they haven't been away from that house for 15 years. That's their, their home, their life. Can the county come and take you from your home and put you somewhere and keep you there? Well, under certain circumstances, Mr. Stone, I'm afraid so. If it's determined that they're not capable of caring for themselves. It would kill him, Doc. I tell you, it would kill him. Mr. Edmund, I know the county is paying for their care. I know we have a right to put them in a home, but what if they don't need custodial care? Dr. Mason's examination found them lucid and basically in good health. There is a county psychiatrist in residency over there. Well, we haven't got her report yet. And you've seen these statements from their neighbors. If the facts indicate that they should go into a home, then we've got to see that they go. What if your treatments don't work? I mean, well, what if you die? If I die, it'll be because my time has come. Miss Doctor, when people take your medicines, can you keep them from dying? They're eccentric, absolutely archaic. I mean, they're unbelievable, but they are sane. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Doctor. That doesn't mean they're capable of taking care of themselves. Have they told you how they live? I mean, how they feel about medical care? Yes. Well, I, I mean, they, they could fall on one of those hills out there. They won't come in for treatment. And I just don't want to be responsible for that. Look, Virginia, maybe they would be better off in a rest home. I don't know. But really, it's none of our business because there's nothing medical to indicate that they have to go. That's subject to your definition of medical ethics, Doctor? Well, it's not part of any ethics for us to dictate how these ladies shall live. We may not approve of their ideas or their lifestyles, uh, but... Jeff, you act like I'm being prejudicial. No, I just mean that they have a right to live the way they choose. And maybe even someday to die the way they choose. Even if it means refusing all the care and treatment medicine can give. We have to believe in a patient's right to refuse treatment. All right. All right. But we also have a responsibility to protect some people from themselves. Anyway, the county wants them released to a home, and I agree. You or I are going to have to sign this recommendation. Doctor, I'm afraid you're going to have to sign it because I'm not so sure that the care and concern of the county is what they need. Well, Dr. Best made a decision. I'm not sure I know really what's the best thing for them, but it is not ethical for me to second guess another physician. <laughs> anyway, it is your boss who has already signed the papers to admit them. But he... Yes, he already talked to Dr. Best on the telephone. We didn't waste any time, did we?
Well, this is it, ladies. Looks like a really, really nice place. Well, this is, this is your room, ladies. It's real nice, real nice. So cold in here. Oh, well, that, that's because it's air conditioned. Mr. Stone. Yeah? Is there a window? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a large window over here across the room. It's a nice window. Look, looks right out on some beautiful trees. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it's real nice. It's... Uh, room's real cheery, you know. It has... You, you have your own private bath and... Well, I... I, I guess I'd better be going. I... Now, look, Miss Barry, I, I, I don't want you to worry none, you understand? I, I'll, I'll take care of the chickens and the ducks and, and the kittens and I'll... Yeah, maybe I can get the kittens a nice home. Uh, don't you worry on you here. You take care of yourself and everything's going to be all right, you hear me? Miss Paxson. I'll come back real soon, right? I told you it would kill him to go there. She hadn't said a word in two weeks. Not to Emma, not to me, not to anyone. I'm distressed to hear that, Wally. I, I don't know if there's much I can do. I, I can go see them, talk to Dr. Best. Maybe, maybe the chaplain can help them adjust. <laughs> Doc, you don't understand. There ain't gonna be any adjusting. They're just gonna die, that's all. Now, Mrs. Barry, you just have to eat something. What will the doctors think? Will they think we're not taking good care of you? Do you want us to think that you don't like us here? Won't you just try a bite or two? She sure is a... Hello, Dr. Mason. Is there some problem, nurse? No, sir. Mrs. Berry just doesn't ever seem to have an appetite. But you know how it is with children. They hmm. all get hungry sooner or later. Well, how are you, Mrs. Paxton? I'm worried about my things. Did somebody feed my chickens? Oh, oh yeah, yes, uh, yes, the chickens have been fed. How's, uh, how's our friend? Oh, doctor, I'm so worried about Olive. Now, something's happened to her. She's not herself. Well, now, Miss Barry, what's all this about you're not eating? Now, you know, I eat here quite often myself. It's very good. You wouldn't just be acting this way because you don't like your new home, would you? This is not a home, Doctor. Other people can't make a home for you. Home is something you've got to make for yourself. And it takes lots of time. Lots of time. And give us some time, Emma. Give this place some time. There's not that much time, Doctor.
Go to the window. See if you can hear the sunrise. I guess it isn't time for the sunrise, dear. They are not stable. This depression only proves that they're not mentally capable of living alone. Virginia, as a Christian physician, I'm concerned about treating the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. My specialty is the body, yours the mind. What about her spirit? Doctor, I don't know about the spirit. Well, I'll tell you. Olive Berry's spirit is out there with her owls and her trees and her chickens. Now she's shut off from everything that gives her life. And I'm convinced she'll never adjust to that. We're treating a rational patient against her will. A nursing home is not a treatment. But aren't you using it as a treatment? Against old age? I've done what I think is right. I believe that, Virginia. But I don't agree with you. I'm going to get them released. Dr. Mason, our office has closed their payment file. Oh, no, a, a different department handles their care in the rest home. And the health department is also involved. I don't think they're going to like it one bit if you try to turn this all around again. Carol, where is Miss Peters today? Doctor, once a person is given a number, we can't give them another one. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't help you today. Uh, excuse me. I've called the county twice this week. I can't seem to break through the red tape. They told me yesterday that the fire department can't decide to give approval of occupancy of the house because of the condition of the wiring. <laughs> what do they need with electricity? I, they haven't had electricity in that house for 10 years that I know of. I'm sorry it looks like a conspiracy, but it's not. And I think I work for the same lousy system. I know, Wally, nothing wrong with the system. It's made up of people like you and me. But for the system to work, we have to realize we're dealing with real people, not just numbers. Well, it's like an old 1940 movie. The, the, the innocent inmates are locked up in a solitary confinement, but the execution goes on as scheduled. Dr. Mason, it's Olive Berry. They just brought her into emergency. They think she's dying. Oh. What were the initial symptoms? Severe pain in the chest, gasping, collapse, and later cyanosis. Give her 10 milligrams of airman IV. Blood pressure is 70 over 40 and falling. Pulse is extremely rapid and feeble. Start 10,000 units of heparin IV. She's failing, doctor. Start a second IV. Give me a slow infusion of lefafit. Blood pressure is unobtainable, doctor. And pulse, it's gone. Mr. Atman at the county. Tell him to come to my office immediately. Tell him it's an emergency.
You're the one who examined her, doctor, not me. You're the one who said she only had simple arthritis. What are you trying to tell me, doctor? That she... that she died of a broken heart? She died of pulmonary embolism, Mr. Ratman. Probably caused by her total inactivity during these past weeks due to her depression. And it might interest you to know that she had refused to eat or drink or communicate in any way. Well, why didn't you do something about it? Why didn't you force her to eat? Feed her with a needle or something? Make her walk? Because she had rights, Mr. Atman. Rights. I'm not just talking about the kind of rights a hospital gives a patient. It's much bigger than that. I don't know if you're going to understand all this or not. But this whole thing has to do with God and man. He sees his creation destroying itself. But does he force us to behave ourselves? No. No, he tries to win men back. But his only method is love. He decides to suffer in man's place. To take all of man's suffering and guilt and hopelessness and put it to death on the cross in the person of Jesus. Then he says to man, you don't have to live in that condition anymore. I can change you if you'll make the choices I ask you to make. But he will never violate our will. He honors us with a freedom of choice that is so sacred that even God himself won't violate it to save us. He even gives us the right to self-destruct. And on the small scale of Olive Berry wanting to choose how to live her life, the same great issue prevails. The essential right of choice. And I'm sorry to say, I played a part in violating her rights. And so did you, Edwin. Doctor, you're trying to get me to feel something about all this. Well, I'm sorry. When you have 100 cases a month, you do what you're supposed to do. You do your job, but you don't get personally involved. That's what they told me in medical school. Well, it was good advice, doctor. I'm really sorry this happened to you. It didn't happen to me. It happened to Olive Berry. I, I just don't understand why you're so concerned. She was an old woman, 75. Mr. Atman, to anyone who is alive, every day, every single beating moment is precious, is priceless. Are people just objects to you? Numbers? I do my job. Well, I'm glad you do, because I'm sending Emma Paxton home today. She's going back to her animals and her flowers and her dreams, and maybe, maybe she can live a few more years in her own private, special way. But neither you nor I are going to interfere with how she lives it. She's a patient of mine, and that's the treatment I'm ordering. I'm expecting her checks to begin arriving next month. I wish I could have gotten off work to go to the funeral. It was a simple service, but I guess Mrs. Barry liked things simple. That's for sure. Well, it won't be the same around here without her. You know, she always gave me a hard time about the sprayed foods in the supermarket. She thought she was going to die for me. Lots of kinds of poisons in the world, Miss Peters. Oh, yes, Mr. Stone. But God has some great antidotes for some poisons. He uses people like you. <laughs> Look, you put your job on the line for them, too, didn't you? I guess God uses lots of people. Mr. Stone? Yes? Did you hear the sun rise this morning? 
Yes, ma'am. Oh, it was lovely. I tell you, it was just lovely. <laughs>